Hello world, this is Peaches and I'm back. I hope you've been good to yourself and better to your health. I just wanted to get on a rant for a few seconds. Um, I had seen an article referencing Jay-Z teaming up with um, Yo Gotti to sue the prisons here in Mississippi due to the unfair treatment and so forth. Um, viewer, as it said, discretion advised. These are my opinions and my opinions only. As adults, we all make decisions. Um, regardless if we want to accept those consequences and those decisions that are had, they're made. However, <laughs> um, what they're doing, definitely, you know, I totally agree. Bring attention because some of it is horrific. Um, the living conditions, the food that's being served from the, according to the prison, a fight between two rival gang members or gangs, period. Um, so therefore there's death killings, 20 people to one bump. I don't know if you ever seen the movie Life <laughs> with uh, Martin Lawrence and Eddie Murphy and <laughs> the guy said, I'm gonna go across that gun line boss. That's the way they depict it is basically the way, you know, that they are living. So, you know, definitely, I mean, that's everywhere, you know, whether here or abroad. Prisons are not supposed to be, you know, as if you're on the streets. It's supposed to be a punishment. But at the same time, it should be levels to that punishment, right? We are still here in America, and so we all deserve certain human standards. However, with that being said... I just feel that sometimes we focus on the adults, but if we can capture the children that grow up eventually to be adults, right, then maybe we can have better citizens and better individuals making better choices. If we're able to teach our children while they're young, and when I say young, I mean as early as them being embedded in the womb while they're going through their nine months of stages before they enter into this world, you have to be teaching them and being careful what you subdue your body, your mind, and your subconscious to. Because the way um, Satan really works, you know, people think Satan is this big boogeyman that lives under the earth in hell and fire and damnation. But... He actually resides in your mind, your thoughts, in your emotions. And so, if we're not teaching our kids, our children, right, to think for themselves, and if we're not teaching them to find the God within and listen to that quiet voice, then we're allowing the world to manipulate and control their minds and guide them in a way that they want them to go in. You know, I had read somewhere um, years ago that the United States Department of Education once had said, you know, they knew they had something when they could take a child from their parent at such an early age and guide them in the direction they wanted them to go in the way the world wants them to go. Oh, Jesus. So when I read that, right off the back, I was like, oh, Lord, I'm homeschooling my children because the devil is alive. <laughs> I'll be darned. They're trying to have the Nigerian come out of me, eh? They don't want the Nigerian to come out of me because when the stuff comes from the to me, I don't even know myself sometimes, eh? So, you know, I try to speak American so that the people can understand me. But at the same time, don't get this played, eh? I am Abel, and Abel's do not play that. And so I definitely homeschool my children. They are now in public schools, which is a whole nother story. This may be a part two, but 
<clears throat> they are now in public schools. However, I still homeschool them and give them that homeschool aspect as far as implementing the knowledge and the books and information that I want them to know and I want them to learn because I know what the educational curriculum is teaching and is very lacking. And instead of the teachers being guides to our children and, you know, helping them to think on their own and to think for themselves, they go with the flow, they go with the curriculum, you know, and sometimes it's not what they're teaching, it's what they're not teaching. We know they're not teaching our children at all. My kid, my two boys know their teachers are not teaching them. But if they learn something new, right, then they will let me know. But overall, I've worked in the schools as early as pre-K all the way up to 12th grade. I've been a teacher, an instructor, and an assistant in these educational buildings. And I've seen a lot. Everything from hmm, children, having sexual identities as early as second grade to girls being married with babies as early as seventh grade to just not caring anymore to the ones that they are caring and it's just the few they're pushing through and that few got to push through all of that what I just mentioned. There's definitely the habit of drifting. I don't even like social media, to be honest. Um, I try to use social media as a benefit. As far as, and when I say social media, I mean as far as Facebook, Tweet, Twitter, um, Instagram. I, I'm not on any of those things. Uh, MySpace and Facebook. After Facebook, eh, that was enough for me. I can't keep up. I'll leave that to the younger generation. And I didn't even want Facebook. But the reason that I got Facebook is because my little brother, Irizi, lives out of town. And he had Facebook. And when Facebook first came out, that's really before cell phones really just pretty much got popular and things of that sort. And you were still pretty much paying for long distance. And so that was one way of us to communicate um, very cheaply and stay in contact without, you know, him having to pay or uh, me having to pay, right? So um, one day my cousin Tanya seen that I was on Facebook and she sent me a friend request. So that was my second friend <laughs> and they were both family members. And so, you know, she sent me that request on Facebook and um, I accepted it. Um, and she's like, you know, you got to post pictures and stuff so people know, you know, what's going on, this, that, and the other. So I'm like, okay. But, and then obviously it grew, right? But once I started to see Facebook and, I can't even say Facebook, but just, the, just once I started seeing people comment, shall I say, on Facebook, it confirmed what I thought my whole life. And that is... Satan has 90% of your mind. And he has 90% of the population's mind. Because the things that you type and the things that come out people's mouths. <gasps> ridiculous. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. And some of it, you be, well, me personally, I be wanting to comment to it, but my spirit be like, don't even waste your time because you're going to be disappointed because these folks, their thoughts are not their own. Maybe their thoughts is coming from the media themselves, Facebook, news, TV, movies you don't watch, music you don't listen to, uh, everything but a book you don't read. That's where your information is coming from. And so... You know, like I said, it's all good, you know, to put the emphasis on the men in prison and things of that sort. Definitely the men that are in there innocently definitely need the sunlight shined on them, <laughs> for sure. Um, because injustice 
needs to be served. Um, as well as justice needing to be served. But the people who know knowingly put those people away, knowing that they didn't do the crime, they should uh, get the book as well. Especially if they knew what they were doing. So, if we can just reach our children prior to them growing up to be men and women, then the world would be a better place. But the current parents that we have now is not happening at all. The rhythm, hypnotic vibration that goes over the world, over the earth, over the cities, over the neighborhoods is playing and doing what it's supposed to do. Creating negative thoughts. I preached this so many times and I'm still the same girl. I'm still Miss Peaches. Everybody know who I am. And if you don't know who I am, if you don't know who I am, then you should have some type of idea of who I am if you don't watch more than one video. I'm still that same girl. Still that same lady. Still that same woman. However, I don't see with these two eyes anymore. I see with my third eye. And when I, I see things differently and when you have elevated higher spiritually, and subconsciously and you're more wise and aware of certain things your spirit won't allow it to be penetrated by nothing that's not the truth and as soon as you hear those lies you'll be able to put discernment on those lies you'll be able to put the truth on those lies You'll be able to recognize it, nip it in the butt, keep it moving. Once we have bared, especially women, of course, our children, you should be wanting to spend every waking second with your child, especially the first five years. And... When I say every waking moment, I mean you should be the caregiver, the caretaker, the care provider, um, the nurturer, everything as a woman because you bared that seed. I know for me, that's how I was with my boys. Please, I ain't even want my own mama and sister <laughs> watching my baby. Tell me you got to share the baby. I ain't got to share no baby. That's my baby. I don't want to bear. Uh, the last nine months, gained a hundred pounds, they in there to risk my dog life. I ain't sharing nothing. of my infants, you know what I mean? So, it just amazes me, like, first of all, do moms even cuddle babies anymore? I see so many newborns in full-blown outfits, bro. Like, <laughs> got on the whole fit in gym shoes, feet just falling to the side. Like, the baby only two days, you know? Lord Jesus, we're going to pray for him. Hallelujah, yes, Lord. You know, we have to do better, eh? We have to do better, eh? You know, it's just, <laughs> it's a lot of things that I see that I'm just like, wow. You know, people mad because Cardi B want to run for politics. Well, psh, Kim Kardashian opened up the door for that. Trump has proved here in America you could be anything you want to be. You know what I'm saying? Look, we had a black president second under the United States Constitution. So, you know, they let you know you can be whatever you be. And obviously, as the politicians say, what? The representatives, what? Represent the people. So, I'm just saying, you know, uh, that further confirms that 90% um, of the population is nothing for themselves. And, um, yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, you know, and if she do, she'll just be representing the people. Everybody out here thought that in any way. You can't, Lord Jesus, you'll be surprised. You send your husband or your wife and kiss him goodbye off to work. And they got a whole another life at work. It's crazy, you know. Um, the devil, once again, he gets us through our mind. He gets us through our minds. And 
And when we do that, we tend to drift. We drift, we drift, we drift, we procrastinate, we procrastinate. We never just fully just move into our position in life. And so if we can just get our shit together as adults so that we can facilitate and teach something and leave something behind in the generation that our great great grandfathers and grandmothers did because we don't have no big mamas no more. Them, them, them gone. Them gone. And it's something about people, especially young children that's around their great grandparents and things of that sort. They have this spirit, to me anyway, I've noticed, um, like a spirit of calmness, you know, in them. It's kind of hard to explain, but um, yeah, they have like this spirit of calmness in them, right? And so I kind of wish I had that, you know. I'm low key J. They say don't be jealous, but I'm low key jealous. Everybody who got a grandma, got a grandpa, knew their grandma, grandma, and grandpas and stuff, because, you know, I never got a chance to know my of that. So, you know, I, that's definitely a blessing to know generations, but I also, but at the same time, I got a chance to know my great great uncles and great great aunts and things of that sort, generations that went back. And so, you kind of, the way I grew up, um, definitely grew up as a lady. I was taught at a young age. And so, I think that's the benefit that I have over some of my peers and, and most of the world. Because I was raised by an older generation. My mom was 32 when she had me from the South. Very wise woman. And I was always raised around wise, uh, wise women. My dad is smart. He's a nuclear medicine um, radiologist on his own practice and things of that sort. And so my mom is a hustler. I think that's where I learned it from. My dad got the book smart, so I definitely got it through him. But he has no common sense at all. <laughs> and I mean that in a good way. Um, do open heart surgery and everything, but can't check his voicemail type stuff, you know. So, uh, <laughs> And then my mom is book smart and got the street smarts as well. So I definitely um, have both of those um, characteristics installed in me at a young age um, to be a hard worker and to work smart. And so my mom was able, like I said, to as a young child, right, as we should be doing with our young children, she was able to install into me to analyze things and be able to think for myself and just don't take what someone is teaching, what someone is telling you, but to research it and to read a book. And, you know, I used to, when I was younger, I used to always say, oh, mom, I'm bored, I'm bored. Man, you ain't bored. You're going to read a book. Your mind will take you anywhere. I'm like, well, you know, you're young. You ain't trying to hear that. <laughs> so I'm like, what? I'm trying to hear all of that, you know? So... But yeah, you know, so I appreciate that now that I'm older, I get it, you know. And so your mind is powerful, basically what she was telling me. Then another, oh, Lord Jesus, another one of her favorite signs, I mean, another one of her favorite sayings was, um, if if you don't, your mind is like a bank. If you don't deposit nothing in your mind, you ain't going to be able to withdraw nothing now. Can you, uh, if you don't deposit no money to no bank, can you withdraw the money out? No, okay then. So that's how your mind works. You know, that's the type of mother I had. Definitely, I am appreciate that. Taught me self-discipline, self-control. You know, um, taught me priorities over pleasures. You know, things of that sort. Um, seeing certain things. And if going through it, been able to recognize it, but then eventually tolerance kick in and then you get fed up, right? And then you're able to get strong and move past it. And then once you do, um, you won't you won't accept that anymore. If you're if you're smart and you're thinking for yourself and you're not letting other people think for you and letting the world think for you and you're out here drifting and you're procrastinating and you're not moving with purpose and you're not moving with the plan so you can create harmony in your life. So these people that's unable to think for themselves and, uh, and unable to uh, analyze things correctly is due to, unfortunately, the structures of the school, the structures of churches, our parents. They all work together, and the parents that do know 
are able to kind of shield their kids for, from it, right? And the other 90% of the population don't know, so they subject their children to it. And unfortunately, because the way they were raised, they're really thinking they're doing their child a justice, but you're not. And I know, because I'm one of them, eh? I'm one of them, eh? I was grown up on the American side and I was grown up on my Nigerian side, so I was able to see both sides of the world. And I am native to both lands, eh? So I know my nationality and who I am. 90% of the world do not know, huh? That was, that's why they have to take that test, uh, some Dollar Tree test, I don't know, this is a generational test, I don't know, to figure out basically who they are. I don't know. I don't need to do that. I know who I am. I know where I come from. I just need to go one generation back, not six, seven, eight, nine, ten and letting a computer and some blood I sent into I don't know where determine who I am. Because I know. And I'm thankful for that. So when you're able to install the power of thinking for yourself and to your children and teaching them that God just don't reside out there in the world, how are you going to believe in God out there and you don't even believe in yourself? Folks be tripping me out like I always got something to say, but the stuff you be saying don't even be making sense. See what I'm saying? Because if it did, you wouldn't be saying it. <laughs> Seriously. And like I said, it's sad to see people materialize their children physically, sexually. I don't like that neither. What's wrong with y'all? I don't have no girls. So, you know, the way I was raised, I was always taught, hey. If you ain't got it, you ain't did it, you can't speak on it. But I'm going to speak on this because it's nasty. Stop doing it. Stop calling your two-year-old and your one-year-old sexy. Beautiful. It's okay. Gorgeous is okay. But why she got to be sexy? Who does that? You sexualizing your daughter. Then you got her out here twerking. Really? Really, sis? You gonna, you gonna have your one year old and your two year old here out here twerking, filming her live, talking about, oh, she's sexy. Get her. <sighs> so, you know, we we as individuals, we have to do better. And then soon, and she's, and especially if you know your daughter beautiful, she don't need all that extra. You just have to reaffirm and fill up her cups and let her know that she's beautiful, um, affirm everything that she does, let her know she's worthy, let her know she's great, she's honorable, she's virtuous, you know? Whatever just happened to little girls just being cute and, and innocent and, and, you know, that type of stuff. Why, why they gotta be sexy? Some grown folks ain't sexy. You notice that? Especially like with men and stuff. You know, some men is cute, and then some men be like, oh, he handsome, but then some men be like, he got, he's sexy, because they have sex appeal, like there's levels to this, you feel me? So, we don't want to start our children off young, so, so young and exposing them to so much stuff. There's so many levels of pedophilia out here. Hmm. Yes, it is. There's levels to that as well. I teach my boys that as well, because we don't play them type of games over here. Uh... Men, I don't like males talking to teenagers and stuff, talking about, yeah, man, shit, and you get all this shit, I'm putting them dicks on them girls, huh, and big ass feet, huh? I don't like all of that. Because, see, my son, 14 years old, and he's standing like 6'4", wearing a 17 in men's shoes. So, <laughs> mama not playing them guys. <laughs> we not playing. <laughs> I'm not playing. No, like the way I was raised. Like, great. Right. And I tell my sons, you know, I don't mean, mommy don't mean to be mean, but um, we don't spend the night over people's houses, and, and they get it. <laughs> they understand, because they don't act. My, my kids do not act to spend the night over no one's house, because I've broken down clearly, and the way I do it is by, you know, examples, by storytelling, and by my own personal experiences, and this is why I say what I say. And so once I break it down like that, you know, um, they respect that. Now, you don't want to take care of everything because you uh, <laughs> don't want them to think that that's cool and you don't want them to repeat that like the incident and um, Bill Cosby's uh, TV show he had with um, his son and he was telling him about his college days. I, mean, I know y'all remember that episode. He was telling him about his college days and stuff and about how they had the, the uh, 
chair and the beer came down the holes and they were sliding in the water. Next thing you know, here goes his butt sliding down the same little water stream and his little apartment got kicked out and had to come back home. <laughs> so some things you don't want to basically tell your kids because they're it's in, it's embedded in their DNA and their genes, so they liable to repeat it. But certain situations or certain things that you know you went through that you know that you can sh not necessarily shield them from, but um, let them know about so they can be aware. They have to know how to maneuver and things like that and do things differently. Um, so yeah, uh, we 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 convert our children, you know. Um, to definitely drift from their self-determination when we place them in school early. Yeah. Yes, we do. Um, they love minds get manipulated. They go to church in and out. I think for me, I've always been bold and courageous. And, 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 I always been afraid of heights though. But when I look now, hindsight looking back, that's why I said your parents and your school and your church, if you notice, that's the first foundation that we're building for our children. And that foundation, if we're not aware of the people that we're putting in our circle and the people that's in that foundations, it can be very manipulative and it can be hindering and hurtful and Fear was first installed in me in church. When I mean, you just think about it, just think about it. And as you get older, certain fears attach, right? Because your mind, your body, your spirit, your soul, everything is, is energy, is moving, right? So you're bringing everything into your existence. So if church is your foundation, every sense... As early as six months, you were Christian. A lot of us were, especially you, the black baby. Your parents Christian you. That was really big during the 90s. And um, early 2000s, you know, whole 20 years, probably later than that. But just really big, you know, making sure you were giving your baby back to the Lord. You know, because that's what he blessed you with. And so you want to make sure you give him back and let the Lord will be done with that baby. And you just here to provide and protect, you know. And so they install fear, Satan, right? Hell, damnation. You do this, mm -hmm. you go in there. Mm -hmm. So that's where fear is first installed. It's all working together. And it snowballs as you get older. Now you, especially for me, who's an empath, and you know if your baby an empath, um, you say, well, Peaches, how do I know my baby an empath? Your baby could be one years old, two years old, three years old. You can tell if your baby's an empath. You watching a cartoon or a movie or something like that, and something bad happens to maybe like the main character or something like that, and the baby start crying. Because uh, they they don't hurt the monkey. You, you so you know because she can relate, right? So you got these fears snowballing in church. Then you you go to school because it reminds you your parent is just almost like a facilitator, helping the churches and the schools and stuff control your your child and take the mind because yours is gone. Because you got to be the one taking them to school, make sure they get there. You the one got to be make sure they in church, choir practice, and that stuff. And I'm not saying that education and spirituality and things like that is bad. Trust and believe. That's not what I'm saying. But what I'm saying is how we go about it is iffy to me. It's not making sense to me at all. And I, I don't even want to understand it because it's going to give me a headache. So... They go to school, and the school is a prison. Real talk. The school is a prison. <sighs> they have so many rules and regulations and 
policies and procedures and this and don't and that, this, that, and the other going on to where the child can't be they self. God forbid the child be they selves. Oh, Jesus. Then it's called low tolerance. Teacher ain't got time. Suspension, alternative schools, parents constantly getting called, all of that stuff. Half of these schools don't even have, um, you know, when we were going to school, we had recess in the morning. We had recess before school started. Um, then we had recess again after lunch. We definitely took gym. It was required every year. So we were very active. They made sure, even in middle school, we had recess. Like, these kids are not allowed to have recess. They're not allowed to have social time. They're not allowed to be individuals. God forbid you your child gets in trouble. They're not rolled up. They're called charges. This is how they're writing things up in elementary, second grade. Your child get rolled up and get suspended. If you're looking at that wording, what does it say at the at the bottom? Insubordinate behavior because your child talk back and ask the question. Some of these schools you ain't even oh okay, especially if you go to an alternative school, because I don't work in an alternative school as well. In an alternative school, if you ask a question that's talking back, that's insubordinate behavior. That's a level two point five uh level of offense or something like right? they're getting called charges. They're like the terminology that they're using, they're already acting like these kids is in prison. They already told us they're based in their statistics on how many prisons to build off second graders. So if your child has gotten grade as early as has gotten in trouble as early as second grade, trust me, they got a spot for him, baby. And they're gonna be watching him and they're gonna be on him. And if he done went to school, an alternative school one time, his past, regardless of how straight and narrow. He goes, he's going to be on probation. They're on probation. Yeah, probation. I bet you didn't know that, huh? Because they call it something else. It's probation because you mean to tell me your child went to alternative school 30 days and did his time. And when he goes back to his home school, he still is supervised. He still is wrote up for everything he does because he was in that situation because he had to go there. And half the time, your kids that really go there that need to be there, they're there. Some of them come straight from prison. I mean, not straight from prison, straight from jail. Um, these kids that murder folks, they don't sell drugs. They doing everything. They bring the drugs in the school, all of that. And we live in Mississippi, baby. My children, that's why I homeschooled them. And I hate that I even put them in school. And they don't, especially my oldest one, he don't even like school. He don't like going. He like because his mind is so first of all so surpassed what they're teaching, how fast they're teaching it, and then his peers, his peers blow it, his peers blow it for him. This boy has been building. I'm not trying to be funny. Literally computers since second grade. He's been building computers since second grade, and now. <laughs> so yeah, you know these. <laughs> His mentality is past the average child. And so, he feel like it's not a waste of time, but he just feel like the children are immature. So, it puts him in a predicament that he, don't, he doesn't want to be in. So, you know, um, we tend to drift even as adults on every subject, right? Um, we um, had to charge my phone. Excuse me now. We drift on a lot of subjects, you know. Um, for example, health. Eating bad leads to indigestion, leads to bad thoughts, negative thoughts. Oh, I wish I wouldn't have did that. Oh, I feel bad about myself. Oh, uh, I know I got my diet. Oh, why they bring that to work? They knew I was I was fasting. They knew I was on a diet. Mm -mm, we're not going to do that in 2020. We're going to take accountability if we do it. Then we're going to hold ourselves accountable. We're not going to hold anybody else accountable. We're not getting stuck in our feelings. We're not getting stuck in our thoughts. Because once again, that's how Satan controls you. It's through your feelings and through your freaking thoughts. So get out of them. Get out of them now, please. Let's focus on our children. Because in the blink of an eye, they're going to be 18. And they're going to be the same 
individuals that we're talking about 10 years from now, 10 years ago, and we could have did something when they were smaller and showed them what's right, showed them what's wrong. Why wow, y'all, especially in some y'all with these some of these people with these sons. Why all y'all sons gotta be gang bangers? Why they gotta be dressed and looking like little thugs? Looking like they out there working getting a check. It's okay for your child to be his child as long as possible because they're only a child for a small part of time, right? They're only a child for a little bit of part of time and then they're grown forever. They're grown forever. So no need to rush. No need to rush. Um, what else? Yeah, so marriage. Oh, Jesus, we're not even about to go. I don't, I can speak on it. Like everything I'm talking about, uh, I can speak on. Y'all, excuse me. Oh, bad. But yeah, I can speak on, right? Um, a lot of people get married without a plan, without a purpose. And if you don't have a plan, you don't have a purpose, you're not going to have harmony. So stop it. You don't have to get married because you, you got her knocked up. True be told, some babies is better in wedlock. Hell, some situations ain't even worth it. Oh, Lord Jesus. But that's a whole other situation. And so, with that being said, now you know, do better, right? So, just make sure you have a purpose and a plan so you can create harmony. The ones that do have purpose and plan, you can tell. Excuse me, you can tell they look harmonious when they're together. Like their energy flows. You can tell when something's being forced or you can tell when something is not evenly yoked. You can tell when something's not your type. You can tell when someone is very dominant. You can tell a narcissist. Um, occupations. We drift. In our occupations. All of you drift in your occupation because here in America, it only best to be an entrepreneur. No offense, but I've been an entrepreneur my whole life since I was nine. I found my natural talent at nine and I was doing hair. And you can ask my mama if anybody know her. I'll tag her. Mama, you watching? Make sure you verify what I'm saying. Had my mama living room, dining room, sunroom, and kitchen full. With women, men, and children. And by the time I had that full, I was probably in the seventh grade, but I was doing hair as early as nine. So many people that I had to turn over to my cousin Shay, who lived next door, and have her take some people off my hands. I had people literally leaving the hair shop because the hair shop, a certified cosmetologist, messed up on their hair. For whatever reason, they didn't like it, the color didn't come out or whatever, and wanted me to fix it. And they were always pleased. I was fading men. Yes, fading men. I didn't have social media back then. So um, a lot of my success at an early age, you know, um, wouldn't nobody know but me, the person that was there in God. I've been blessed to walk off showroom floors. Literally designing GL 450s, Mercedes Benz's, Porsches, um, land, uh, Range Rovers, designing them, and then getting them shipped in six months later and paying $110,000 cash or $80,000 cash. So <laughs> I think that's probably why, and I'm only not even 40 yet, you know? So I think that's why my mind kind of is not where my peers is because it's like I've been there I did that I don't need that to validate me now I don't need that to validate me anymore because I didn't have it and it's crazy because I never understood what my mentors um would say you know especially the rich ones that's been financially independently uh free for over 30 years now you know would say certain things like that and, that, and now I get it you know and I'm to that point it's like I've been there done there on to the next you know so with our occupations, a lot of people drift in that too. You're here in America. If you're here in America, this is an entrepreneur country. The only way you're going to benefit and win unless you're an entrepreneur. If you work for somebody else, the country is not here to benefit you, to serve you. You're not going to win. You're not going to benefit. So quit grouping, quit complaining about it. Either suck that up or do something about it. And I'm telling you straight up like it is. United States of Northern America is set up for you to be an entrepreneur, 
If you're an employee, you're not set up to win. What we do after college, most of us, find the first job, right? That we can find that, ooh, we gotta pay bills, and we got these college loans, and uh, some of them living on their own, and then God forbid you got a, a man or a woman tagging along with you, now you feeling obligated because uh, she was with me through the struggle, he was with me through the struggle, so I own this, that, and the other. First of all, that's a whole nother situation, but let me stay focused. But anyway, um, yeah, so you do things without a purpose because you feel like you need to make a living right, and I never forget when I graduated, I love the certain mentor, mentor that I had throughout my life. And so one professor um, that I had, we ended up being cool and things like that. And me and her son, she told me, you know, she was like, and I'm glad she knew me on that personal level, right? Because people from the outside can see things a little bit better than you can when you're on the inside of stuff. And you know if it's coming from a genuine place. It may not be something you want to hear because it's going to get your plan. But hindsight, once again, looking back, that lady was right. I'm glad I did. And I was able to establish the different things and I benefited from it. So make a long story short, she basically told me to graduate because I started at Phoenix College. And she told me to graduate there, even though I was still transferring to the university to finish up on my bachelor's or whatnot. And so I'm glad I did because the person I had there at our ceremony for graduation was awesome. And I did graduate uh, with honors in high class. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> but anyway, um, the person we had there was the Arizona State um, attending Attorney General at the time. And out of everything he said, because, you know, sometimes they'd be up there for a good 30 minutes and, or an hour. And, you know, it's graduation. You ready to go or whatnot. And people always had some plan. I ain't never had nothing planned after graduation. But uh, I had went. And out of everything he said, this goes back to drifting. And this is when I was first in introduced to it but didn't really know. See what I'm saying? What it was. But he planted something in my subconscious. He planted a seed there. I see them dry. He said, and I don't want to mess up his words, something to the extent that we have cried, we have laughed these past couple of years, we have stayed up late, we have rose early, we have attended our classes, we have did our work, and that's why we're here. Because we did, we put in the work, we put in the grind for something that when we said we started out, this is where our heart was. This is what we wanted to do, right? So he said, don't. Now you got it. Do not, by all means necessary, do not go out there and get the first job taken to you because you feel like you got to pay bills. He said, a lot of us do that. He said, stay on that path. Stay on that on that course. So if you went to school to be a nurse, make sure you go out and get a job at a nurse. Not, oh, because I'm going to take this telemarketing job until I find a job at nursing. Um, how a lot of us is taught. See what I'm saying? And so with that being said, that's, we drift in our occupations. Our occupations have us drift. Because next thing you looked up, you'd have been at this company five years. Damn, damn time fly. Because you, now you're in the mode of check, paying bills. you you right back in that rhythm around. So, you know, we drift on everyday subjects, on everyday life. We drift in our savings. I'm an accountant, Lord Jesus. I'm in finance. I'm in business. All of it. I see it daily, in and out. Folks ain't saving no money. Y'all just spend. <laughs> Living broke. Broke. No money. Y'all, some of these folks are trifling. They'll go out there and get a loan just to go to Atlanta. God forbid if they got a car and they own it, little, little hood car, you know, they, they finally paid off or, or they done got for cash, baby, they're going to go get a title loan on that. $1,000, here we go, Atlanta, turn up. Hey. Your rent ain't even paid. You ain't even got fat. You, you know they ain't got nothing in their savings if they taking loans out. Just, just spending money. How do I feel comfortable? I told my mama one day this goes to show how, and everybody know I, I'm, 
I ain't gonna say I'm tight with money, but I do not believe in buying depreciable items. Like, it, it only necessities. I don't believe in wasting money in no depreciable item, baby. Miss Peaches don't do that, baby. Uh -uh. Nope, can't do that. I don't, I'm not standing in no line for my sons to have no Jordans because they the first 200 pair that came out because these Jordans came out, baby, back when I was in middle school. My son have stock in Nike. That's what my children have. They have stock. So we encourage you and your children to keep buying them Jordans because, baby, y'all y'all helping our, our stock price increase. But mm -mm. other than that, I, mm -mm. I, I can't do it. I can't do it because that's, that's BS. Now, come with me with some real stuff, you know. And then another habit that I tend to have, and I feel like it's a um, waste of money, loaning money a lot of times to people that I know ain't going to pay it back. But, like, you know, once again, that's where that crippling thought come in that churches and Christianity and, and, and being a Baptist, you know, uh, when you do something, you know, which I do that anyway, you know, um, it say never look to someone, look to the Lord to return the favor, right? Look from to the hills from which comes your help and your help come from the Lord. So I definitely do that. That's why I've always been blessed. Never worked. I want to be honest. I, to be honest, when I look back on it, I never worked. I um, had my first, well, two second real jobs. One was I'm um, a salesperson, knew nothing about selling cars, and I was number one every month to where the men hated me. It is what it is. Um, just left a, um, XPO distribution company. Top dog there. A lot of people, counterparts didn't like me. It is what it is. I don't care. I'm still going to be me. And probably because corporate standing on the floor <laughs> telling everybody to give your girl a hand clap and do they know how bomb I am? <laughs> Man, look at here. I can go on and on. But so yeah, don't don't drift in your occupation. Don't drift in your savings and your money. Get your money. Um, you know, we life is too short. Life is too short to die because a job is stressing you out. Life is too short to be at a job that's not paying you enough to take care of your kids or pay your bills or pay your bills, take care of your children, extracurricular activities, take trips and food. If it ain't doing all that, you gotta let go. And I mean doing that on your own. Not because you're getting help and resources from all these different places. Um, in our environment, we drift in our environment, stay in places way too long with family and friends and, and, um, work and even at home when things, once again, is not making us feel good. I told y'all about my seven second rule, baby. If it ain't making me feel good, just, ah, just, oh, just, oh, Jesus. I don't want it. Like, I don't, I don't want it. I'm not about to keep subjecting myself to things that do not make me feel good. I don't have to do it. I don't have to do it. And I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. Um, and dominating thoughts. Stop it. Negative thoughts. When we dwell on our negative thoughts, it becomes a part of what we believe. Now we're dwelling on it. Now we're believing it. Now we're feeling it. See what I'm saying? Now I'm saying I'm emotions. Now I'm in my feelings. Now I'm acting out because that's the next step is to act out what I'm thinking, what I'm feeling. Now I'm acting it out. Now that I'm acting out, I'm believing it. I'm manifesting it. I'm bringing everything negative into this environment. So that's why I said don't even start to drift. Don't procrastinate. Don't let Satan take over your mind. Satan is not a man who lives in hell. He's not a tail or a snake that runs this earth, he's a part of you. Hey! He's a part of you, baby. He's in your negative thoughts and he's in your negative feelings and emotions. So get out of them. Laws of nature, all creatures, um, except for man knows about it. Why? I don't know. I don't know. But... I just wanted to get on here and rant, man. I just, I just wanted to rant because what I see, you know, going on with with our children, the way this world is working, and in, in, in the lack of knowledge that we're 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 implementing in our children, we cannot do it alone. Like we we need you, mom. Like we need you, dad. We need you, cuz. We need you, big brother. 
Whatever. I'm that village. Like, that's how I was raised. You take a village to raise a child. That's how I raised you. You better, I better not see your child walking down the street acting like he about to fight or bullying or horse playing, pushing. You know, sometimes, have you ever seen those kids walking down the street and they like to push kids in the street? I don't know if you've ever seen that, but baby, I, I don't play about that neither. I turn around so quick and it'd be funny because they respect me. <laughs> My children respect me. They know I don't play that. It is crazy because, you know, usually you would think I have boys. I'm six feet. My son is 14 Six four, so he's standing over me. Sixteen man shoe, which doesn't mean anything, but just size comparison, right? And then my nine year old probably come up here. So, like, yeah, you like right here. How tall is that? You know, five, 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 five seven. <laughs> so they're more afraid. I won't say more afraid of me, but because they know their dad get in them too, but. For whatever reason, they 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 fear me more. It, it's crazy because I didn't even know that, right? So one day, um, my oldest son had got in trouble at school, and the principal had called me. And so when we were talking, he was like, you know, uh, Miss Howerboard, um, I just wanted to say that you know I was I had mentioned to call his dad, and he had like he didn't. <laughs> Yeah, like he didn't care when I said I was gonna call his dad because he was acting up, and this was probably when he was like in fourth grade or something like that. And so he said, Oh, so you don't care if I call your dad? Okay, well, I'll call your mom. And then the principal was like, The oldest one was like, No, no, please don't call my mom, please, I won't do it. And so I said, He did that for real. <laughs> so, oh my gosh, that's just a funny throwback memory. So, yeah, I, they know I don't play those type of games. I don't play those type of games. When it comes to our children, we have to protect our children. We we see things that know it's out of love or know that's off, right? But we don't say anything. And then we fought ourselves because it has happened or we knew about it, but we didn't say anything. Or sometimes we harass the wrong things and we focus on the wrong things because of one child's mistake. But not knowing that at the end of the day, they're a child. You're not knowing that your child is restricted at school. You and then some of you parents, let me get back to that real quick. Like these these children in these schools is what's really eating me up inside. And I have posted something and I told parents, like, if you have small children, especially in elementary, you need to be doing pop-ups at these schools. You need to be checking up on your babies. A lot of these schools, if you notice, they don't like pop-ups. You have to, especially in middle school. Back in the day, my mom used to be able to pop up, walk through the classroom, sit in the classroom, all of that. Some of these schools, they have to, you have to get in contact with the principal so they can uh, let, you, so you can let them know what day and time you want to come by so they can inform the teacher. Oh, that's too much. I want to pop up. And that's what I do. My son got a school like that. I, don't, I act like I play dumb every time. I'm, <laughs> I'm popping up. Well, did you contact the um the principal first? I said, oh, we spoke about it. I told him about it. I said, I ain't here to interrupt because the way their um, classroom doors are set up, you know, they have the wooden doors with the window in. So I could just walk by and let my presence be seen and let my son know, hey, I love you. I'm thinking about you and I got my eye on you. Especially when y'all couldn't do your job and you interrupted me every day talking about what he doing. So no, we don't don't do me, and they know these teachers got my phone number on cell phone, uh, cell phone number on speed dial. Call me anytime, cause I don't play about minds, and I let them know, and he know as well. Especially when he done did something that's. And then the crazy thing about it, my son ain't even bad. That's the messed up part about it. He just too dang on smart, too dang on smart. And then he stands six feet. Oh, and so they expect him to act or have a demeanor of a grown man and a lot of these grown men is childish so that's a lot he's like I have to keep reminding him you know he's 13 14 years old just like any other childish little boy you know what I'm saying so don't don't do mine because he ain't around here beating up on folks he ain't throwing kids in the trash cans he's not being disrespectful to his elders to these faculty and to these teachers it's just horse playing and if you're gonna punish one you need to punish all and I've seen some stuff go down to where you'd be like okay so you sending kids to DCAC, which is an alternative school, for things as less as taking a, a, a pen off a teacher's desk. But here you got a whole boy horse playing P 
he urinated now <laughs> in a, a kid's empty 20 ounce pop bottle and then somehow it appeared on the child's clothes. This kid's walking around middle school now pissing. <sighs> so, it, 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 school is crazy, you know. And for the parents that's smart and that knows this, they're homeschooling their children. And a lot of black parents are getting on it. Most of them are kind of like the revolutionary type, you know, uh, militia uh, type, you know, parents and stuff. Back in the day, see, it was just the white folks uh, homeschooling their kids when I was little because they know. See, the ones that know, they have the money to have tutors and facilitators and stuff to teach their kids. Or they teach their own, depending on their lifestyles and things of that sort. And I remember those kids, and I, it was funny because I was like, well, y'all don't go to school. We've been in school ever since kindergarten. I mean, you have to take naps. And kids is fast. They are. Because I remember this boy as early as first grade. And I don't know if y'all remember, but Ariel. You probably remember his name because we went to Jefferson in Dayton, Ohio, and we was in first grade, and our classes were in the basement, and this was way, 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 way long time ago, and uh, you knew that it was going to be a great day when you seen this big old tall like stand with a TV on it, right? And when they brought the TV in there, you're like, oh, show movie day, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> The best thing as a kid, be time. snack time, nap time, movie time as a kid. Favorite time during a whole day of school. But anyway, kids is bad because we had a visiting class, right? The class next door. This day, they had to come over into our classroom and watch the movie or whatnot. Look, boy, I caught him putting his little hand up my skirt. He's just sitting there looking. Little black, ugly little boy. So I'm looking like, ooh. I don't even like you. I remember I don't want him in the boy. It was so funny. I remember, uh, God rest her soul, my, uh, one of my best friends, Madonna. I was in third grade and uh, it was this boy named Michael. And um, I just thought he was just one. And I was new to the school, you know, and I'll never forget I was in gym. And I just said the boy was cute. You know, I didn't know nobody no boyfriend and girlfriend or none of that, you know, because I was still playing with dogs, baby, ever till I was 15. Truth be told. Um, so, yeah, and she was like, uh, you can't like him. That's Katie's boyfriend. Another, now, she my best friend. Um, and so, I was just like, what? what's a boyfriend? I'll never forget. So, third grade. Yep, my best friend, LaDonna, told me what a boyfriend is. Yeah. So, with that being said, <laughs> parents, we have to be the ones teaching and molding and informing our children. Um, stop shutting your child down when they want to come talk to you because you on the phone or you smoking or you drinking or you talking to an adult. First of all, we should be teaching our children not to interrupt adults while they're speaking, right? Um, to interject when it's an emergency or something um, of importance. You know, so we just don't want to tell, you know, we because especially when they're young, you you know, as they obviously get older, you guide them and stuff like that. But as they're young, you want to teach them to tell everything. You don't want them to start deciphering what to tell and stuff like that. And that's one thing that me and, you know, my ex-husband didn't agree on at all with raising our sons. And I'm like, first of all, they're boys. They don't whisper like I'm old school. Ain't no whispering. Ain't no keeping secrets. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's stupid. You don't do that with little kids. You don't teach kids to whisper. You don't keep teach kids to tell secrets and things of that sort. That's ways pedophiles move in, keeping secrets. Oh, this is between me and you. And you tell your mom, I'm going to kill you. You know, stuff like that. So you don't want them to start deciphering what they need to tell, what they don't tell, and all that. Let them tell everything. You know, how beautiful would it be if your child was the first person they came to to want to know something that they totally know nothing about and you have the beauty to be the first person and implant that seed. That's a beautiful thing. For example, my little one, right? Um, yeah, he asked me, Ma, he was like, we was in the kitchen and stuff. And he was like, Ma, can I ask you a question? You won't get mad. <laughs> so, so he said that. You already know everything about spirit life. <sighs> Radar up, but you know, it's like a Holy Spirit or something coming in and got to calm you down because when he say you won't get mad, then that means I have to take a step back within myself, right? And make sure that I have an open heart, 
um, a mind of understanding and whatever I say, I present it with love and I'm patient enough to hear what he has to say. Right. And so, um, and then I said, yeah, I want, what you have to ask me? I won't get mad, you know? And so he asked me, he was like, mom, now mind you, he in fourth grade. He was like, how would you know if a girl likes you? It's in my mind. I was like a little relieved, like, oh, okay. <laughs> but then at the same time, I was like, wait a minute, I ain't ready. <laughs> this is my baby. But I, I just I just felt honored. You see what I'm saying? Like you you came to me, you know, because I already could kind of see that he was watching um he likes to watch like the Minecraft. I uh, think it is, and, and Roblox videos of like people, other people playing the game and stuff like that, which that's something I don't understand. But he said he learned new stuff by watching them play that he can learn. So I guess that's just the new way. We old school, we trial and error. We just got out there and did it. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and KO, knock them out. That was it. You know, pushing buttons. That's how we learned. We were just pushing buttons till we figured, oh, we can do that. Or what do I do to do that? You know what I'm saying? So. New generation, I guess, since you do have those resources, you know, why not utilize them? That's what I teach them. So it kind of backfired, I guess. But it basically was just a beautiful um, thing to be that person to, you know, be able to provide him with that information. So, you know, of course, I gave him that that pimp talk, you know. Hey, I'm, I'm raising sons at the end of the day. And ain't no little hoochie, little, ain't nobody little fast little girl gonna be getting over on my boys because I'm raising real men. My four, son, 14 years old, already cooking from scratch. Hmm, already cleaning, already, man, look, I'm smart, intelligent, already teaching him the God within to think for himself, to know his mind, already been entrepreneurial. Like, I'm not raising no saps and no suckers. Mm, I ain't doing it. But so, yeah, you know. This was just like a little rant. You know, it just started off for me. Um, looking at that post, like I said, about Yo Gotti um, wanting to team up, obviously, with Jay-Z and Rock Nation because that's a powerful move. That's a black man worth a billion dollars. And for him to go down to uh, where the judge said lives in Mississippi, she, he, he worked a whole damn gone more than a whole darn town. So he definitely was smart in that move as far as a power move because... Uh, that's why I don't listen to 90% of what y'all post and what y'all say, to be honest, because ain't nobody talking about nothing. And you got to get the money first in order to gain the respect, in order to gain the power. And that's what I'm working on. You feel me? I'm working on gaining that money so I can gain that respect. I already got the, really got the respect, but the respect on the power on a level to where I have power to where I can start changing things behind the scenes. And that's where it counts. Once you get the power, the money, and the respect, you're supposed to change things in a major way and for the good. And not be selfish and doing it for yourself and still buying cars and all of that. Like, that shit get old. And so, as Jay-Z is getting older, hopefully he realizes and he understands that, that that gets old. Like you said, holding the money up to 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 your ear. Well, I know I'm going to move some millions. You, you didn't even know until I told you. But... That's why I'm going to be posting all my business. Because <laughs> the little stuff I do post, I ain't even got to post nothing. The folks already know how I get down. And in 2020, I already told folks, I'm not loaning out any more money. I'm not doing it. Um, but I can't show you how to get to the money. I am willing to invest in great ideas and business plans. I am willing to do that. And it's a stock and land and, and, and be a silent partner and, and create some partnerships and put everything in right. All that good stuff. I'm willing to do that. But all that other necessary stuff, I'm cool because a lot of y'all drifting anyway. You're procrastinating and you're not um, taking action. I'm taking action. I'm working on my business so I'm not working in my business. Building a team so that I can have the time to, you know, spend with my children like I need to. So, yeah. This was definitely a rant because I took up an hour of your time. If you listen to the whole part, I love you. And if you didn't, you wouldn't hurt that part anyway. So I guess it don't even matter, huh? <laughs> but yeah, um, I just wanted to get on there. How many, you know, once again, teach your child early. So we don't have to worry about Yo Gotti's and Jay-Z's and Rockefeller's nations and and, and Kanye West's and Kim Kardashian's representing black innocent men in prison. 
because they'd be smart enough to think for themselves and they don't know what to do in order to get there, right? And sometimes things happen on our own account, but then again, they'll be smart enough to think for themselves, to get up out of it, to know the resources that they need to get up out of it. It's crazy because um, my children, they, they know that there's a... Um, Uh, 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 what's what I want to say? Like, they know it's something over the city of Memphis. Let's just put it like that. And you can only feel it when you're driving in the city. So, y'all Memphians, y'all got to stay prayed up, man. Y'all got to leave the city. You got to travel. You got to see that it's more out there. A lot of people ain't been nowhere. They ain't did nothing. They still, I don't, you know, and I don't mean to put nobody down, but. My children have been to all 50 states, and now we're trying to move internationally, booking flights internationally, secretly, silently, um, planning a trip now, got a little bit delayed because I started the business, things of that sort, and I was spontaneous, and I just went to jump into it, so I was like, hold on, everything put on hold, let me build a little team, find some foundation, and then push from there, and so... Um, yeah, working on a 30-day trip ourselves, you know, um, around the continent of Africa. I'm going to see a lot of countries. Like I said, we're already from there, just haven't been back home in a long time. So going back to see brothers and sisters. and Yes, an extended family, you know. Brother got married. I have a beautiful sister-in-law. And so, yeah. But yeah, I just wanted to get on here for a minute and say, teach your kids early. Stranger danger. And stop telling them just scream and holler. That, Cause that just look like a badass kid acting out with their parent. Like you have to tell them, drop down, lock your legs around <laughs> their legs. Take your arms, wrap around uh, other legs, and scream, and keep screaming, stranger danger. Those are the key words. Those are the things that we um, listen for. That happened to my son in second grade, stranger danger. But because I taught my child about stranger danger, he was able to be aware. And, it could, you know, just the small things as teaching your kids, adults shouldn't be talking to children. That's a no-no, because adults know that's a no-no. You see what I'm saying? So... You know, I know sometimes they see, say early, you know, it's too early. And I feel like it do be too early because you do not want to, you know, put those type of things into their spirit and into their subconscious. But you have to because we don't live in the same world we do like when we was younger. We just don't. And even when we was younger, my sister almost got taken by a Scooby-Doo looking thing, stranger danger. And if it wasn't for me looking out and yelling those specific words, all the moms on the block when it came out ready to bash his head in. So y'all stop mistreating these babies. If you don't want these babies, give them up to somebody who do. Tired of it. Tired of y'all being trifling. Do right so you can do right by your children. So when these children grow up, they can be honest citizens we need them to take over the world like what is y'all thinking who the hell is y'all thinking gonna take over the world and you wonder why these white folks been sitting in the house and sitting in the senate and sitting everywhere else for the past 150 years i keep sitting there too shit the hell all right well i think i don't ran it long enough i don't want to waste no more of y'all beautiful people time I love you. Continue to please be good to yourself and better to your health. Make things happen. Make sure to subscribe. Like, seriously, I appreciate, let me just say, all my 64 subscribers. I really do. But if this is your second time watching my video and you ain't subscribed, let me find out. Hmm. Okay. Let me find out it. You don't want none of it. So go ahead and hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, and definitely comment if you can um, resonate to anything that was said, all right? This is your girl Peach, and as always, 